My favorite part of the Oddworld games is how they give you an explicit fart command. <laughs> because I'm an adult. And this is an Indie Nation episode 165. Greetings, citizens! I'm Jeff, and today we've got some exciting new indie games to check out. And whether you're a fan of roguelikes, puzzles, ninjas, racing, or crazy introspective art pieces, I think there's going to be something for everyone. So hit that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and let's get down to business. These are the nine-ish new releases hitting the Nintendo Switch through Sunday, November 13th. A couple weeks ago, I was looking for a slick new game for my Steam Deck, and I got absolutely hooked on this unique twist on the roguelike formula. I knew it was coming to the Switch at some point, but I had no idea that Orbital Bullet was releasing on Thursday, November 10th. This game is really cool. So it takes the side-scrolling run-and-gun format and turns it on its head, or rather wraps it around its head? Every stage takes place on these big cylinders, so whenever you move left or right, you're actually rotating around the outside, but you're still moving and shooting in 2D. You defeat all the enemies in that specific encounter, and then move up or down to the next floor of that cylinder, or sometimes you take a zip line over to another cylinder, until eventually making your way to the boss. Outside of that, it does all the things that any other good roguelike does. There's challenge rooms, modifiers that increase the difficulty, skill trees, multiple character classes, and weapons and gadgets galore, with everything leaning heavily into types of elemental damage. This is the first game to come out of the German studio Smokestab, and besides the neat shift in perspective, I think they really nailed how progression works in line with a faster, shorter runtime. It releases by way of Assemble Entertainment with a discount for $14.99 and is absolutely worth the price, as I've put about 10 hours into the game myself and have only unlocked maybe a quarter of the skill trees. We'll be sure to check out Orbital Bullet this week on Nindies at Night so that you can see more of this excellent 2D sci-fi run-and-gun with procedurally generated levels, roguelike mechanics, and RPG Elements! <laughs> Hello to the new people here. This is a thing we do. On Tuesday, November 8th, we see, um, PlayStation games? I mean, sure, let's port some PS5 games to the Switch. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? First up is Oddworld Soulstorm, which was the gorgeous, long-awaited fifth entry in the series that released for the PS4 and PS5 late last year. Let's step back, though. Oddworld Abe's Odyssey released for the original PlayStation back in 1997 as a puzzle platformer with dark humor and a ton of slapstick comedy. It received an amazing sequel just one year later, and then a third-person adventure for the Xbox and a shooter that hit all platforms in 2005. The crux of the game is that an evil corporation is capturing all of Abe's people and turning them into food. So in most of these games, your goal is to reach the end while rescuing as many of them as possible. And really, they're all very, very good in their own way. A couple years ago, the Switch received the 2014 remake of the original game in Oddworld New and Tasty, and if you're new to the franchise, that's where I'd recommend you start, because Soulstorm is a direct sequel to that game. This latest entry pushes the game right to the brink of 3D, but it still plays in 2D, this time around adding in some RPG and loot systems, as well as some chase sequences that feel right out of Rayman Legends. Unfortunately, though, the game had a ton of bugs when it originally released, but most of them have since been patched, leaving the game with overall mixed reviews depending on when that specific reviewer played it. However, all the fans seem to love it. It's such a beautiful game that I'm really concerned with how it'll run, or I guess look, on the Switch, especially after a rocky start on the more powerful platforms and publishing by Microids, who has a track record for buggy Switch ports. It releases for 50 bucks and is developed by the Oddworld inhabitants, but I'd recommend you hold off for reviews. In the meantime, look out for a sale on New and Tasty, because that game's great and it's frequently discounted, so it's a great way to dip your toes into the world of Oddworld. 
Follow me. I'm gonna say a lot of the same stuff with this next one, because Sifu is another PS4, PS5 game making its way to the Switch. Slow Clap is a team based out of Paris, previously known for Absolver, their open-world fighting game with innovative combat that released back in 2016. Well, they took that slick combat system and threw it into a kung fu story about a student on a path of revenge, finding both critical and commercial success with Sifu, which released in February of this year. The big shtick here is that as you fight your way to the top of the mob in these open arena combat scenarios, Anytime you die, you restart the level a few years older. Eventually, if you get too old, you die. <laughs> Such is the way of life, I suppose. But it gives it a bit of a roguelike flair that causes you to focus on progressing further while staying young. The combat is excellent, though, and what the game is all about. <laughs> and it is tough as nails. You tackle multiple enemies at a time, so positioning is key, as is a super deep parry and combo system that is constantly evolving and if you don't keep up with it, you're bound to meet your end. If you're looking for an intricate, seriously tough game to sink your teeth into, Sifu is probably it. But just like Oddworld, I'd suggest waiting to see how the performance pans out before dropping $39.99. Now on to some simpler, more traditional indie games. Next up on the 8th, we've got Orkin Axe, which releases by solo developer and friend of Nindy Nation, Origami Hero Games. For $3.60, you get a traditional 2D exploration platformer with 5-8 to eight hours of gameplay, and I really like what he's got going on here. It's a basic hack-and-slash, hop-and-bop adventure with skills to find, abilities to upgrade, and equipment to buy as you explore and ultimately find your kidnapped partner. Anyone interested in seeing more of this one? If so, we could probably check it out on Nindies at Night this Thursday. And then East Asia Soft brings us the only noteworthy Nindy on Wednesday the 9th, as Super Woden GP fishtails onto the eShop for $11.99. Developed by Vajuda, this isometric racing game is clearly inspired by classics such as RC Pro-Am and Micro Machines. It looks pretty fun, with a variety of environments, multiple modes including a full campaign, over 70 cars, and local split-screen racing for up to four players. For those of you looking for that nostalgic racing fix, Super Woden GP got great reviews on Steam and looks set to deliver the same when it hits the Switch. Then we've got a neat little puzzle game. Reminds me of Myst, but also uses a bunch of machinery that looks a little bit more like Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes, as Littlefield Studio brings Makanika Museum to the Switch alongside a free demo. I like the vibe here, and how the developer is focused on letting you interact with and play the game however you like. Check out the demo if you want, but keep in mind that there's currently no price listed, so I'm thinking there's a chance this one might get delayed. Oh wow, now this one takes me back. Somewhere around episode 15 or so, we covered Aragami, a stealth ninja game heavily inspired by the Tenchu series, and it was pretty well received back when it released. This week, the sequel Aragami 2 releases by way of Lintzworks and Merge Games for $34.99. When it released last year on Xbox and PlayStation, it received mostly average reviews, with a bunch of 7s and a few 8s, and now that it's coming to the Switch, well, you know how this goes. Hold off to see how it performs on the Switch before you dive in. Blah, blah, blah. Though, I will say, I'm more optimistic about this one than usual, if for no other reason than the screenshots and trailers show a game that, uh, <laughs> looks like it was downscaled to the Switch. <laughs> was that diplomatic enough? Okay, you ready for the big promising $5 Nindy of the week? Because Lunastus has been getting a good deal of coverage in the Nintendo press lately, and I think for good reason. You know, in the past I've mentioned how excited I am to see upcoming indie developers move beyond the 8 and 16-bit era, and as they naturally age, we're seeing more and more indie games show up that bring us straight back to the days of PlayStation and Saturn. Just <laughs> look at this. Also, listen to this. I mean, this looks great. It's a 3D mascot platformer that's based around speed and momentum. In Lunastus, you guide Hannah the Tanuki through a bunch of dreamscape levels as you... help reach her the moon? Yeah, that sounds about right. Doesn't this look great? 
It's five bucks, it's published by Deck 13, and not only does it have a demo, but it's also developed by a team called A Grumpy Fox. What's not to love? And then last up this week on Friday the 11th is a game that... <sighs> Look, this game has an overwhelmingly positive score on Steam, with nearly 13,000 reviews, which is an enormous feat. So, while I'm staying the f*** away from this artistic manipulation with word and form, only then, a game. I gotta hand it to Forever Entertainment and Nikita Kriukov because this is, well, well, it sure is something. Milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk and milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. <laughs> hey. Comment down below if milk comes in bags where you live, because I sure as hell haven't seen it. I think it's a Canadian thing? I don't know. What do you want me to say about this game? It's an artsy-fartsy visual novel, but like if artsy-fartsy was more like psychotic diarrhea nightmare fuel. I don't know, I'm too old for this sh**. Remember though, it's like one of the highest rated games in recent memory, so people who dig this apparently really dig this. It seems like you help this girl go on a small errand, hence the milk, but then like manage her psychoses or something, as if it were supposed to be a deep dive into mental struggles or something. If someone here plays this, let me know what it's like. I'm super interested, but I personally have no plans to check it out. You want to see this one on Nindies at night? <laughs> well, too bad! It's seven bucks, so it's not asking much, especially since it seems to be uber replayable with dynamic scenes and all kinds of stuff to freak you out. Okay, well, we can't end on that one. I need something more uplifting, but that's really all I saw for the week. Hold, please, I gotta go find something. Let's see, Pocket Mini Golf 2, nah, Kamikaze Veggies, nah, Brain Memory, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Here we go, how about Sausage Wars? Cubic Games, developed by Crazy Lab, oh, look at all that mobile garbage they've made. Um, it's $4.99 and, well, it looks like a zany multiplayer party game with a gimmick. And that gimmick is Murder by Floppy Dicks. So, what do you see? It's super easy to recommend Orbital Bullet since that's the one I've been recently obsessed with, but there's a bunch of PlayStation games if you want to roll the dice with those, too. I also like Orc and Axe and definitely Lunastus for some cheap, quick fixes, but what do you think? Did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comments or come hang out with us on Discord where we can chat about murderous breakfast meat as one big happy family. Nindies at Night this week is going to be great. We'll check out Orbital Bullet for sure, but I also think we'll dip our toes into a couple of upcoming indies that are either on their way to the Switch or still in early access. So I hope you come join us this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for your support, citizens. If you're sticking around to hear this, you're the real ones, and I'm very thankful for your support as we, you know, change things up a bit. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out, and remember that the best way we can grow is through your help sharing Nindy Nation with others. Until next week, I'm Jeff, this has been Nindy Nation episode 165, and remember, no matter what kind of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced.